Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So it's uh, that time again. It's our usual Saturday night live, but this t this week it's a bit more special than normal. We've got a very special guest on, and it's someone that I've been wanting to get on for a while. Um, I mean, most of you, if you don't know him, then you don't know because it's Tony O'Neill from Simplify Gardening. He's an absolute inspiration. He's a he's a massive YouTuber. He's um, pumping out loads of loads and loads of in, in brilliant uh, videos. He's helping people. He's he's making an he's he's a massive influencer. So without delaying any further, let's bring him on, Mr. Tony O'Neill. Here we go. Tony, how are you doing? How are right. you? Is my head fitting in this now after that? <laughs> <laughs> Your head's fitting in perfect. Good, good. <laughs> how are you keeping? What have you been up to today? Uh, I've been at the pot all day. I didn't take the camera today. And uh, I've just been sort of trying to get one of those sheds that I want to get down. Um, but it's just so much rubbish in it. The last guy who had it, now I've had the pots for a while, but the last guy who had it has been uh, collecting junk for like 40 years in this. So it's like filled three skips, just emptying it is crazy. So uh, that's what I've been doing today. Right. Um, okay, guys. So look, we've, we've got Tony O'Neill on. Um, if th for those of you who aren't aware, I I've not been able to share this stream out on Facebook. So if you could do me a favor and share share it out, because I've got myself a little Facebook ban. <laughs> <laughs> Sharing so too in, much, Monty. <laughs> so I'm in Facebook jail at the moment. So if you guys could share this out and uh, just post it in uh, our Facebook group, that would be really helpful because uh, right. I'm sure a lot of people would want to come in and get their questions into Tony. So Monty, what we here's a tip for you: get a second yeah. account. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't. I, I didn't do anything that bad. I'll I'll send you the picture of what of my post. Um, yeah, I'll send you the picture of my post. It wasn't anything that bad. It was just, you know, um, a few days ago, my wife was parking her car, and some guy, came, you know, he he stopped. He stopped what he was doing. Just walked up to the window, starts clapping his hands. My wife wears a, a face veil. He starts pointing at her face veil, and then he screams at her, "You know, take your take your mask off, your letterbox." Um, uh, right, then, so that's that's pretty much all I wrote on wrote, and someone's uh, reported me for hate speech, <laughs> and I've been, and I've been given oh. a, I've been put in Facebook jail for for and, that. And the thing is, with Facebook, is you can't um, even if you complain and challenge it, they don't even respond. Like so, it's not even any point. Yeah, exactly. So I've I've challenged it, and they said, right, we, we don't we don't agree with it. We we think that you're you're wrong. <laughs> right, fair enough. If that's hate speech, then I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, I don't want to I don't want to go into that side of things because I've got a special guest on, and I've been wanting to get. Hey, who's that? Special in your all the time. <laughs> Is it... Nah, 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 nah. See, I've been wanting to get you up here, and. Uh, I've been wanting to talk to you live for a while now. Um, the thing is, long before I started on YouTube, I've been watching your channel. I mean, there's a few of you guys that I've been watching. Yourself, uh, Terry King's one of them. Um, Hugh's another one. So there's a, a, quite a few people that, are, that I, I used to watch even before I started YouTube. I mean, watching your Trommel video, that gave me a lot of inspiration. So yeah. watching you building that in, in your living room as well, <laughs> I mean that was like a second drum because um the the first one I had such rocky ground at the old place that yeah. um the rocks that were going through just absolutely destroyed the drum after a couple of hours. You know, I say in a couple of hours, but it was serious graft. They must have moved about thirty ton of soil through it, like you know. <laughs> but they're not welded that great that way a mesh. So um we just built a new drum. It don't it doesn't take long and and that's what we did, you know. Yeah, I see. I watched that, and I was like, okay, now where do I get myself some bicycle tires from? <laughs> the kids are all of a sudden gone. No bike to ride. <laughs> but uh, so, so that was that was quite inspirational for me. Uh, but I ended up going with the blue barrel method because I found someone, uh, one of my one of my friends, he he bought a takeaway, and he was emptying out a load of rubbish, and he had this blue barrel. He goes, "Is this any use to it?" I goes, "Yeah, man, I want that." And uh, so I got got myself a blue barrel for free, and I and I made one out of that. 
But um, but the well, as long as it uh, sieves the soil, that's all that matters, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, it, it does the job. Um, but I'll be that. That's not the only reason I wanted to get you on here. I mean, there's you and me. We talk on Facebook all the time. We talk. Uh, uh, you've given me a lot of advice around YouTube and stuff, and I really yeah. appreciate that. Yeah. And it seems want- to be working as well, mate. <laughs> and, I, and I wanted to have this face to face chat and you know do this live on air, uh, but I don't want to just do it like normal. And what I want to do is I, I want to get to know you for a little bit. So we all right. see we all see you on YouTube, and we all see you. Obviously, we all know you're an expert gardener. That's that's, that's not a question. But I'm just like everybody else, mate. They just do my thing in the garden, but over the years you pick up some tips and you pass them on and that's the best way to do it you know okay so what i want right now is i want you to tell me about you who is tony o'neill okay it's a, question. It's a massive question i take a deep I- breath here <laughs> we might be a while um, uh, right i started gardening at seven years old with my grandfather in his allotment and he had a, an allotment by the uh, behind his house on a hill. So when you talk about tiered gardening, you wouldn't have seen anything like this. You needed supporting walls to hold the banks up. It was crazy. Um, But I can remember right at the very top of this hill, he had a shed and he used to sit in there and bark orders to me. And I'd be running up and down this hill, you know, pulling off like gooseberries off the uh, gooseberry bushes, sticking thorns in my thumbs and everything else. But uh, that time with him there really instilled gardening for me. And um, when he died when I was 11, my father uh, picked up an allotment and I started with him for a little while. Uh, eventually, he became too ill to work the, the, the plot and I took over it. Um, as things happen, you know, you step away from it when you sort of grow up a little bit. And uh, I, I moved away from where I was living with my parents and uh, eventually worked my way back and got back into the gardening. You know, I went to uh, college doing it and everything else, but for one thing or another, it was a case for me, I needed to earn money. Um, So I never ended up in a career with that, which is good Mm -hmm. because I ended up in the career I'm doing at the moment, which I really enjoy. Um, So, you know, when you consider, you know, I'm, I'm about to turn 46 um, this month and it, you know, it's, I'm talking like 39 years gardening is, is crazy, you know, and uh, you learn so much. And a lot of people, they learn the old ways. Uh, take potatoes, for example. Uh, a lot of people will dig a trench and they'll put the potatoes in, they put the manure down and they'll fill it in and they'll hoe it up and, you know, it's a huge amount of work. And then when they see a video like mine that then starts talking about containers and stuff like that, the traditionalists, they go absolutely spare. And um, But what people need to realise is there is a thousand and one ways that work with gardening. And as long as it works, it doesn't matter. Um, I just find a way that works for me better and gives me better yields than the trench methods where I live. It may not be for everybody, but if I'm growing in this way, that's the information I'm going to pass on to people. Um, And I know, you know, it's working for people right around the world because I get messages back all the time um, saying about, oh, I haven't been able to grow potatoes where I live because it's hot and and I've used your methods and I've managed to get my first crop of potatoes. So that's really good, you know, to, to hear things like that. Um, but I've been on YouTube since 2007. YouTube was just two years old when when I actually opened an account, and I took the uh, I took the channel. I was making videos on it and everything else. But in 2012, I decided that I was going to do it properly, and I deleted everything and started from scratch. And that's when Tony's allotment was born, and uh, I went from there. <laughs> How I ever got any subscribers, I don't know because the video is dreadful. Um, but it's like everything else, Monty. You'll know yourself. You know, you you get uh, people will give you hints and tips and things like that. 
you do a lot of research yourself and I, i'm not talking about gardening because for that side of things i'm pretty old fee but it's the things like editing and um how to do seo and how to write scripts how to tell a story this just so much that you have to learn and it's a constant learning process and like here now lighting you know it's um, I'm sat in my living room, I've got absolutely no lights about, but, you know, um, and then as you go, one thing I will say, as channels grow, people expect a lot more of you, so the pressure gets higher as well, and I think sometimes we put that on ourselves, you know, because um, we want to be able to produce better and better videos, and we don't want to produce videos that we've done before, if we get me drift, we might have the same topic, but but has different information or um, explains information in a different way. Um, and that's what uh, I'm sort of trying to deal with now. You know, we're coming up very shortly to like a quarter of a million subscribers. And um, it's, uh, you know, constantly huge amounts of work. And while I am here, I will say a massive thank you to Tina for putting up with me because she does put up with a lot. <laughs> <clears throat> See, this, this was going to be uh, one of my questions as well. How how do you find uh, being on YouTube and managing family life and managing a career in the fire service? Because you're doing a, a really high pressure job there as well. Uh, yeah. There's taking a lot out. <clears throat> there's there's putting a lot of demands on you. So how do you juggle it all? Well, I think sometimes uh, some people will have heard the phrase: "If you want something done, give it to a busy person." <laughs> and the reason for that is because, firstly, you learn to um, uh, sort of manage your time much better. Now, I don't watch television at all, and I, I say that. I do, it, it, but it's on in the background when I'm doing something. Every evening, I am either responding to comments or I'm writing scripts for the next video or I may be editing or I might be writing a blog for the website. Um, I've, I've had a few issues on the website as some of you already know uh, over the last few hours. So next thing that I'll have to do now is go and sort that out. Um, you know, I'm trying to sort out courses, but what you have to do is you have to segment your day. So you've got time for everything. So you have family time, you have time for editing, which um, a lot of people here will know my office is the bathroom. When I'm in the bath, I'm editing or I'm, <laughs> I'm doing something. So I, I get up there and I have one of these little hospital table type things. It doesn't go over the water, but I can turn around in the bath and I'm editing or I'm writing scripts because that's the only place I get any quiet here, you know? Um, <laughs> so, but even when I'm in the bath, I'm working and, you know, it's not for everybody, but I enjoy doing it. See, when, when you're saying that, even in the bath, that's your quiet space. I can totally relate to that. As a, as a father of three young kids, I can totally relate to that. I mean, even in the, when you're in the bathroom, you get a knock on the door. Saying, no. yeah. <laughs> My daughter last night, I was in the bath, like that. she'd open the door, dad, put a towel on your head. I was like, oh, thanks. <laughs> you know, let me get out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, it's it's crazy. Um, yeah. but I mean, I wouldn't change it for the uh, for the world. But no, it, I it, mean, family's everything, isn't it? And that's why we do everything we do. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so tell us a little bit about your family, and tell us a little bit about Tina and how how. Uh, I, I mean, you you gave her a brief mention saying that she was quite supportive of you, but uh, tell us a little bit about everyone. So uh, Tina and I met thirteen years ago. Um, so um it'll be thir well 13 years this year so in july this year and um we both met after we both had failed marriages um so when she left her marriage her ex kept everything when i left my marriage my ex kept everything so we got together and we had nothing we had no furniture uh, you know, nothing. We started from scratch. We had to rent and everything else. So like everybody else starting again, there were struggles along the way. And um, then, uh, you know, I, I just started 
in the fire service. I, I'd been in the fire service about six months or something when when I met Tina. So she's been with me right through my career, pretty much. Um, and uh, Tina's a carer, so she's in work now tonight. They were supposed to be in a night off, but she's been called in. So uh, I've got that. I haven't got the house to myself, but I've got the room to myself. The kids are upstairs on their PS fours, <laughs> being quiet. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, and uh, so she's in work at the moment. Um, and then 11 years ago, we had Caitlin, and you've seen her in some of the videos. So, you know, she was small in the videos, but now she's like five foot four and, you know, it's a and, and mouthy to go with it, you know? Yeah. Um, and uh, and then we had Wayne in the following year. So, um, but they've always grown up around the garden. And for, for those, I wanted them to be able to eat um, really good quality food. And the only way to guarantee that was growing myself. Now, uh, and it's even, even more important now for me and Wayne because we're both celiac. So um, so we eat absolutely crazy amounts of veg. And their favourite dinner is halu, and it's quite rare for kids, but their favourite dinner is a cooked dinner. See, see, when you're talking about that and kids being in, around food and being around the growing process, that, so much, that resonates with me so much because... I, I mean, nowadays people are so disconnected from food. Um, you, you talk to a lot of people and they won't even realise that a chicken and an egg, you know, an egg actually comes from a chicken or milk actually comes from cows and things like that. So that's one thing that I didn't want my want, want my kids to be. Uh, I, want, I wanted them to be right involved. It's not... We, we always lived in a ter terraced house, so we didn't have yeah. access to or anything like that same here we're in a terrace property here um and one thing like i wanted the kids now back when i had the the old place you know we had 49 chickens and eight ducks wow. so <laughs> we, we really went hell for leather on the birds but it was more <clears throat> for the kids to learn like you said to learn where the food comes from and things like that i mean by the time wayne was at like one and a half he could tell you all the veg in the garden, whether it grows above ground or below ground, you know, and stuff like yes. this. And that's huge. And then you'll get people saying, well, what, what use is that to him? And I'm thinking, well, he's going to eat a lot better than you ever will. You know, the, the processed foods these days that um, that they're doing, this, they're shoving sugar into everything and, uh, you know, all these E numbers and, you know, it, it's just crazy. And, and the fact that um, we can grow Pretty much all of our veg and most of our fruit is really good. And it also saves money in the long term as well, you know? Absolutely. I just, I, I just out the corner of my eye, I just spotted a, corner, a comment by Dean uh, saying that I'm never going to catch up with the, with the chat tonight. <laughs> no, so, there's no chance he can't do it on a normal night. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, I do apologise uh, in advance that... Um, if I, I'm not trying, I'm not deliberately ignoring you. What I am doing is we've, we've got to give uh, Tony some attention. Um, I mean, you know, he loves it. We, you know, he loves it. So we'll give him some attention for a bit and then we'll open up uh, the floor to you guys. And then anyone who wants to fire a question at Tony can fire a question and then he, he'll answer that. But let's get to know Tony a little bit better. So you're at the fire service now and how are you finding that? especially with the coronavirus crisis oh, and it's, it's crazy at the moment um especially with everything that's going on i mean the nhs are being slammed as you know but um what a lot of people don't realize is that the fire service for the last two and a half years maybe have been doing what's known as fmr trials now what that is is where we take over all the code red calls so that's heart attacks, choking, things like that. So anything that's with the risk of someone going into cardiac arrest, things like that, fire um, uh, fire service have been turning out to them and not ambulances to take the strain off the ambulance services. But um, with the COVID, you know, we've had firefighters driving ambulances, picking up uh, patients that, that have deceased from COVID and putting our families in line. And the government have been playing pretty hardball and not giving us any injections um and things like that so you put yourself out there but you've got you know you haven't got the right uh, equipment as such 
Um, and what they seem to sort of forget is the fact they're like, yeah, you've got the training for it because we're all trauma trained and that's fine. But what they don't seem to realize is because we're not paramedics, we don't give any medication when we're at these shouts, you know? Um, so whereas they will strap in a patient into a bed, they'll give a medication to calm them down and take away the pain and everything else, and then they'll take them to hospital. When we do it, we can't, we can't strap them down. So you've got people then kicking off because they're in pain and everything else. It's, you know, it's an absolute nightmare at the moment. Um, and all you hear from the likes of government is, oh, yeah, but fire calls are down. You know, they always use that tactic. Fire calls down, fire service got to do more. But what they don't tell people is the fire service are already taken on RTCs. They've taken on um, wildfire. They've taken on cliff rescues. They've taken on water rescues. Um, they, we're doing the FMR trials, um, you know, and there's so much other stuff that we do, like all the education around it as well, you know. Um but um, the job's changing. It's changing a lot, and um, and and they've we've been in a ten-year pay freeze. Uh, we had a two percent pay uh, rise last year before COVID kicked in, and they've now just told us we're going back into a pay freeze for the foreseeable future. So technically, now um, you know firefighters are on um, about eleven pounds something an hour. That's it. You know, and they're putting their lives at risk for that sort of money. You know, um, it's it's really poor money for what they do. Do you know what you mentioned? No injections. Are you to, were you talking about the vac vaccinations? They haven't offered yeah. you that, despite you guys being on the front line. Nothing from them at all. And in fact, I had a phone call yesterday from my doctor uh, offering me the vaccinate my first vaccination, which will be Friday, and that was just as general member of the public. So I've had nothing through the fire service, and I, I, it's the same right through the fire service. We've had uh, crews off with uh, that have had um, underlying problems. They've been off for over a year because of that, and then the rest of us have been having to make up the hours mm -hmm. to cover them. So we've been detaching crews out here, there, and everywhere. It is hard work at the moment, but I mean, I can't complain about it because. You know, I am lucky in uh, one way that I still got a job and uh, and the fact that, um, you know, I don't need to worry about money and things like that. You know, there's so many people in a worse off situation out there than, than I am. And especially like the NHS where they are just constantly rushed off their feet. Like, you know, I really do feel for those guys, you know. See, I can just see some of the comments now that quite a few people are completely shocked by that because we we hear about we hear about the nhs and we hear about teachers but there's these sort what you're just talking about is you know, like support services to keep the nhs running to keep everyone else running and no one even talks about it and well, they won't because they don't want the fire service to be seen now we had a pensions dispute with them since 2012 now it got that bad that it wasn't worth me being in the pension anymore so i stepped out of it which um, isn't a bad thing now seeing what I'm looking to do now. But when you consider um, uh, people who have been paying into a pension for like 30 years and then all of a sudden, a couple of months before they do the finish, they move the goalpost and tell them it's now a 40-year career mm -hmm. or you're going to lose like 7% of your pension for every year you don't do with that 40 years. You know, it's absolutely crazy. The pension went up. I mean, some people, they lose their mind when you know when they're told like you know when i was paying my pension i was putting 367 pound a month into it um and that's a mortgage for some people you know it's it's a crazy amount and yes we've got to support ourselves when we um when we get older and everything else but um they made it they i was paying into the pension when i started for quite a few years and they said that when we signed up, they, it would work out that we'd have about £110,000 uh, lump sum plus £1,200 a month then pension for when we retire. But for that, we had to put £346, whatever it was, and so many pence in uh, per month for the next 30 years. And I thought, well, that's okay, that's fine. Um, in 2012, they brought in a load of new things. They altered the pension, and that dropped to a fifty-one grand lump sum and eight hundred pound a month. 
and the payments went up to just over 380 something pounds a month i thought you've got no chance i worked it out i'd have to wait till i was 93 just to get my own money back and i thought what is the point in that so um i dropped out of that pension and i started investing in properties and stuff like that so that i had a pension i could sell them if i needed to do that later like you know see um i remember in the early 2000s um you know, when the fire firefighters were on on strike it was, yeah. a, was a it was a, is the first time that i got involved in industrial action uh so um well I mean, we were on strike again in 2012 and mm. the uh, government put a media blackout on it so people didn't know about it um, and again in 2016 uh, and another blackout on it so basically the government plays down what we do saying we you know we are less and less busy when in fact in reality we're more busy than we've ever been there's mm. you know, as fires go down because we've done in one respect we've worked ourselves out of a job because the education has been that good and also we have better warnings now like smoke alarms and sprinklers and stuff built into premises. So that's all good. But RTCs, there's more people on the roads than ever before. And RTCs are going through the roof. You know, mm. wildfires are going through the roof. You know, 20 years ago, you would never hear of a wildfire, you know. And I can show you photos now of things burning down around my ears like you wouldn't believe, you know. Um, you know, cliff rescues. I mean, the other week I was pulling a dog that had gone down a hole in a mountain, you know, and he stuck 30 foot down a hole in a mountain. You know, we're going to all sorts of things that you would never have gone to before. And of course, we're doing things with the NHS and, and everything else at the moment. And they're looking to make that uh, a permanent thing. But they, they've been in dispute over, they want us to do that. Now, the police and the uh, NHS, they get and social hours for working nights. Fire service don't get that because if we don't have a call, we can sleep. But they want us to take on this FMR, which will mean we'll be out all night, just like paramedics and things like that. But they don't want to give us any extra payments for the unsocial hours or anything like that. And um, because of the, the, the pay is so low, a lot of firefighters have to work a second job in their time off so that they can make ends meet. But if they took on this FMR permanently without a pay rise, then it would mean that they would have to give up those jobs because they would need to sleep when they're off and they they wouldn't be making ends meet then. Like, you know, so it's, it's at the moment, it's all up in the air for people. But um, we are having loads of people retiring early and stuff because of it, like, you know. Wow. See, the, there's a lot of pressure on you at the moment then. Um, yeah. And you mentioned earlier that um, you're having to cope with all of that, your YouTube and your website, with a few few little issues around that. Um, you, you also talked about your um, ebook that's that's coming out soon. So can you um, can you give us a little teaser about your ebook and what? It, yeah, what, the ebook's just a just a free giveaway for you guys. That's all. Right. So that um, and it's on tomatoes. Um, it's ready to go. I tried. I, I've got the pages and everything set up to go but for some reason um when i've tested it with a couple of people um one of whom's here tonight um it's working on some browsers like chrome and then mm -hmm. there are other browsers like safari and firefox and things like that that won't allow you to go and click on the link to, in order to be able to populate the form to fill it out um so and obviously it needs to collect an email in order to be able to send the ebook to you um and so i'm having some issues with that and then of course today then i launched this uh giveaway telling people they need to uh not the giveaway sorry the oakland garden bucket thing and they have to like be a member of the newsletter for that That's, that was one of the stipulations um and of course that crashed so i've had to put like a pinned comment now in the video so, but it just seems for one reason or another, something's happened on the website and I can't quite figure it out why it's causing these issues. And I've logged into it on Safari tonight and my, my website isn't even loading correct. And it's crazy because I'm putting in so much time in writing articles for the, for the website that are there to give people help and advice and everything else. And then when they can't access it, it's pretty frustrating that you've done that work and it's, you know, it's not, 
going the way you want it to, like, you know? I can imagine it being quite frustrating when it's not, when it, you, you've done all the work and it's just not clicking into place. It's now, just little things, and once you get them right, they'll be fine, but just nailing down the issue that's causing it. That's a, that's a question that I was going to ask you about your videos. Do you ever have videos that you put out and you think you've hit the ball, you've hit it with the video, the content's great, but for some reason, the video just doesn't do it with the audience. For some reason, YouTube Every doesn't. Every time I put a video out. <laughs> yeah. uh, so you know what? It's funny, right? And um, I was talking to Liz Zorab a couple of months ago about this because she's noticed the exact same thing. If you you know what it's like sometimes, Monty, you're rushed with a video. Like, um, you know, you'll, you'll think, oh, my God, I've got to get a video out this week. Normally, I'm, I have, like, videos in advance just to sort of take out the you know something that's issue but when i had all that illness last year i used all of those so now i'm back to producing a video a week and putting it straight out so i'm you know i'm stuck i've got no, no sort of buffer and um uh what i've noticed what i noticed was that every time I rushed to put a video out. That video skyrocketed and <laughs> done really well <laughs> and i put like weeks of work into and and, I, and i'm not joking if some of the videos you know i will have been three days just writing the script um and then I, I might have been a whole day filming it another whole day editing it half a day doing the seo and everything else i finally make it live and it's crickets you know and i'm thinking what have i done wrong you're like you know but it's just youtube is you know um you can do everything right sometimes and it's still not go for you and then other times you can do everything wrong and it will just take off and it's just all down to the viewing patterns of youtube um whether you know people are on at the time that you launch or you know there's so many factors involved in it you know i mean you know yourself you know when we had that conversation about uh what you needed to do to try and get your videos to, to go um and i give you some tips you know, you'll have seen it yourself. Sometimes you'll have worked hard on a video and it's done nothing. And then other times you want to work so hard and that video's flown, you know? Sometimes I think topic is is key as well. If it's if it's the right topic, then it will go for you, like, you know? See, um, like, I've done a few videos where I put loads and loads of research into it. And, and it's not just, like, a few months of research. It's, like, years of research that I'm finally putting out there and it's just it's just like it, it, it's just hit a flat line Do you know a few people clicked on it and then it just hits a flat line and it's just not moving and you think and that's what i was saying earlier on about the pressure that you put on yourselves as you get bigger yeah because as you got more and more subscribers tuning in to watch you put more pressure on yourself to make sure the quality is always better and always growing mm. and there is a danger there, Monty, and I'll tell you now because this happened to me a couple of times of burnout. And um, if you get that burnout, you just don't want to do anything, you know. But um, uh, th th there's a fine balance. And like I said, you know, I, I can put weeks into a video uh, and it's a 10 minute video. And then, you know, you'll get a comment back from someone, oh, thanks, you know, or something like that. And you think, <laughs> What did I do? <laughs> you know, but there's always the next video, and that's the way I look at it. Like, you know, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And I will give you a story here, mind. Um, my avocado video. Um, I'm not sh quite sure. If you've got a second, I will just have a double check while that's at the moment, right? Um, while I got you on. Um, this video right okay so the avocado video I launched in 2018 that video went for nearly a year and a half on 4,000 views and there was so much information in that video you wouldn't believe and it had 4,000 views that was it in a year and a half and i and i it's funny enough i nearly took the video and made it private because it was just doing so bad and then uh, in Jan, in the January, then that video started taking off, and it's now my largest watched video on nine hundred and thirty thousand something views. You know, it's absolutely crazy. If the algorithm wants to work for you, it'll work. What I will say to any creator out there is, 
make the content the best you can, the most informative you can, and leave it. If it doesn't go, leave it alone because who's to say what happens? It's like the candle video I did years ago or, or Brian did when we had like 5,000 subscribers. That was planned uh, to, to release. It went out. It didn't do very well at all. And I did a promotion on that uh, video. It ended up getting picked up by a prepping channel that pushed that video. And then all of a sudden, YouTube just pushed it out to every gardener you could think of. And that video was up over six, 700,000 views. Now, it's, it's crazy if you, you know, a dead video can become live again. Um, but it's all about making evergreen content that people want to search for and, and, and the information doesn't sort of die after like a couple of months or something, you know, that information can be used 10 years down the road. And that's what it's about, really. <clears throat> so, right, it's nice, it's been nice having a chat with you. And I, th and I think some of our audience are getting a little bit frustrated with so us. They need some questions answered. <laughs> so uh, let's open it up to the up to the floor a little bit. So if anyone does want to ask anything, and sorry that I haven't said hello to everyone that's come in, I do apologise about that. So if anyone does want to ask Tony, it's ask Tony what you want tonight. Uh, you can ask him your gardening questions. You can ask him uh, about which barber he uses or which razor blade he uses. <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> <laughs> so, then, what... I'm having so, an easy day. So I, I did. I did give him a little bit of a warning, saying, "Look, it's not going to be like your normal, normal uh, garden chats that you're on." So yeah, we, we want to get because we want to, but let's get some knowledge out of Tony and, and, and let's learn from him as well while we're, while we've got him. So whatever you want to ask, just go for it. Um, saying that, okay, I'm gonna uh, start off. Okay, um, compost. Are you are you a fast composter or do you like uh, going um, going for a slow compost? So with compost, for me, I want to be able to produce really good quality compost within six months. And the reason for that is I have a system that's set up so that I can harvest it twice a year. So um, when I harvested it, uh, you know, about a month ago. That now what I'm putting in those now will be ready in six months' time to harvest again, and um, but essentially I want to get it hot fast, and then once I've got it hot, I want to be able to um, turn it, keep it hot for as long as possible, and then as it cools down, because I only turn my compost once, and then as it cools down, let the bacteria and all the microbes and the worms and everything else do the work for me. And I find that I get a really good quality compost. I never have to worry about, you know, pulling out huge amounts of sticks or anything because it's all broken down. And I do that by shredding everything really well. Nice. That's a, that's a really good tip about compost. Uh, we've got a question from Chris over at Exploring Nature Together. So um, I've put potatoes in the ground, no chance of a bucket. Best tip, Tony? Make sure that uh, if they're in the ground now, make sure if you're going if they're going to come up before the last frost, make sure you cover them over with fleece at night. Otherwise, you're going to lose the tips, and they'll check the potatoes. And if they check, um, you're never going to get a really decent yield out of them. Uh, the other thing is to uh, make sure that you're earthing them up really well because green potatoes are no good to anybody. Um, but um, it's like anything else. Look, potatoes will grow anywhere that you'll put them um and monty you know you've grown them in all sorts of stuff i've grown them in huge amounts of different things and they will grow um but for me i just find that the containers are much better and it saves me space as well uh another one <laughs> are you sure this is about compost i think that's got a bit of a rude <laughs> <laughs> Naughty, naughty. Okay, what's a good editing software? What software do you use? Uh, I your... use uh, Premiere Pro, which is uh, a monthly subscription. I have the Adobe Suite, which I pay for because obviously we're blogging as well. I need Photoshop and, um, uh, uh, you know, Adobe Illustrator and things like that. So I pay for the whole package. Um, but 
I used for years when I first started, I used um, Adobe uh, Premiere Elements and I went through the levels with that, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. I, I think they're up on something like 18 or something now. Um, it's a cut down version of the Premiere Pro, but it has most of the features that you need for editing videos. It's, it's really good. Um, I use a Mac and there's a lot of people who swear by uh, other programs for Mac because it's faster and everything else. But I really like the flexibility behind the Adobe software. So that's what I use. Okay. Um, just on a couple of free softwares as well. Shotcut's absolutely brilliant. I like Shotcut. It's really simple, really intu intuitive to use. Um, and yeah, there's it, a massive learning curve with Adobe. I got to say that there is yeah. a big learning curve with it. Yeah, I mean, um, and it'll run on a, a fairly low-powered PC as well. Uh, another one that's good for a low-powered PC is something called Lightworks. I mean, they actually edit; they've edited Hollywood movies on Lightworks. So whatever's yeah. free freely available to people that's what they're using in hollywood as well uh i don't like lightworks as, as well as much because it's just a little bit clumsy the way the, the way it's set out if you've got um a pretty powerful uh computer and davinci express or yeah davinci express no sorry hit film express or davinci davinci something um uh, the rest of it's not going to my mind but davinci um has probably got it is it's supposed to be better than uh Adobe. Um, yeah, DaVinci is pretty good. Um, I've, I I know a few creators using that, and they swear by it. But it's like everything else. Once you learn a system, mm. especially the bigger programs like the Adobe's and stuff like that, um, stepping across something else, there's always a fail within the video, and yeah. there's another learning curve. Whereas for me now, I'm able to edit the videos how I want them with this. So I can put that time into learning something else to further the um, the organization, if you like, uh, uh, you know, around what I'm doing around Simplify Gardening, you know. Um, I have huge plans. Um, the problem is for me to sort of bring a lot of them into fruition. I've got to bring other people in and I need to step away from stuff like the editing and stuff like that because I need to free up my time. Okay. So we've got a potato question, Tony. Um, so, two single potatoes, one Charlotte and one foremost. She needs to grow them individually uh, to get the heaviest crop. What would be the best method? If you're going to grow them individually, um, go and get, if it's only a single potato, go and get a flower bucket. Um, I think there's something like 10 or 15 litres. That'll be more than enough for a single potato. And um, just grow them exactly the same way as I've uh, given the tips today in my video, um, you know, but cut all the feed in half. And um, that way uh, you're able to just move that out. And it, the, the reason with these containers, why it's good is because they warm up in the sun really, really well. So um, it keeps that soil quite warm and the, the tubers like that when they're growing. And, and also you're restricting the root zone and they quite like that as well. And they have to then take up the feed you're providing them. So um, if it's only single potatoes, get them flower buckets. Or if you want to grow them in the same container, get a 30 litre and put them in there. But um, Charlotte, you'll know exactly what they are because they're a fantastic little second early spud anyway. Um, here's one. I'd love to run over my, my sticks but um, with a lawnmower, but I think my family would kill me. <laughs> um yeah see right uh, with sticks and things you can bash them with a hammer right so all you're looking to do it doesn't matter if you can't get them into tiny little pieces but if you bash them with a hammer what that does it damages all the um the, the structure and the, and the cell, all the cell membranes it causes them to explode and then the bacteria can get inside and that's the main thing if you're just leaving it as a whole piece then the bacteria can't get in, and it's the bacteria getting in will make the big difference with it breaking down in the compost. Obviously, if you can break them up as small as possible as well, then you're laughing, you know. Um, but uh, I'm, uh, I've am i bought a, an old garden shredder that they've used for, for things like that, you know. The only thing those sort of things aren't very good for is the soft stuff like leaves. And um, last year I was going to make... Um, 
uh, a video based on a, a, a leaf shredder that I was going to build at home, a DIY one, very much like all my other stuff. But um, with Corona hitting down and everything, I couldn't get all the parts I needed. So um, uh, I'll, I'll probably do that later this year. So um, another thing on that is if you've got just a normal garden spade, just make sure you've got a nice sharp garden spade. Get a, get a metal file and sharpen it if you have to. Lay your sticks out in a straight line and just bash them with that. You'll cut the stick. You'll cut the sticks up into small pieces, and because of the trauma, it'll bruise it as well. Uh, that's a yeah. quick little method that I used to use quite a bit. But um, I like my lawnmower uh, on soft sticks. I, don't, I won't use my lawnmower on hard sticks. Um, I, I get quite a few. I, I get quite a few uh, comments. I got. I got this American guy a couple of days ago. Uh, saying that I was giving really bad advice, telling people to run all uh, cardboard with uh, with a lawnmower. But yeah, what can you do? I, 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 like I said, I, there's, a, there's a million and one ways to do something, and sometimes you know the quickest way is the is the best way. And you might have an old lawnmower that you're not worried about damaging the blade on, so it will make a difference, you know. Um, so at the end of the day, it's just a rotary tool, isn't it? You know. Um, <laughs> And, and they're there to use a job. Now, if you haven't got any grass and that's what you got your lawnmower for and it's doing the job, then it's doing what it's designed to do for you, you know? So I've noticed you've got a second YouTube uh, channel for shorts. Why did you make a second channel? Right. <laughs> There's a little bit coming on with it. I know to say I haven't posted on there for a little while. When YouTube released shorts, it was to combat uh, the likes of TikTok. And... Um, I like the idea behind the the short content, but I didn't want to put it on my main channel for the simple reason being was YouTube uh, didn't know at the time how to deal with uh, separating the statistics from the YouTube short and the main videos. And when you want, when you put a lot of effort into your main videos, you don't want anything that's going to bring down the average view duration for your channel. That's why um, you don't. If if someone watched a whole of a one minute video, the most view time you're going to get out of that video is one minute. So whereas if you did a ten minute video and they only watched half of it, you've got five minutes. So this is what it was about. It was about making sure that those shorts didn't affect the average view duration of the channel, which would mean whether or not YouTube would stop promoting the channel or not. So I decided to put it on a second channel just to see how it went. And that was going really well. And then YouTube, in their wisdom, decided then that they were going to change the way they were uh, promoting those videos and the way that they were taking the stats for them so now i'm toying with the idea of including them on the main channel but at the moment it's still a little bit up in the air until youtube finally makes a decision um i won't know what's going on so um but um what it will mean is that uh you'll still get the one or two videos a week but then you might get sort of like daily sort of shorts as well uh, on the channel and uh, you know it's a good way to to just get like one question comments across or uh just a couple of tips across something like that just to sort of bump up in people's minds when they're doing things you know mm -hmm. see i've not been a big fan of uh the shorts um I, I, it, I think it's, it's a lot more work than people think and, yeah. and a lot of people aren't using them to their best effect and what you're seeing now on youtube which i think you'll see nailed very shortly is people copying across TikTok content and there's a lot of issues with copyright around TikTok content because of the fact that the music that's being played in them and things like that is all copyrighted. How they get away with it, I don't quite know. But um, that won't wash on YouTube and it's causing some waves, let's say. And uh, until it's all ironed out, I'm just holding back at the moment because the last thing I want to do is uh, start causing the channel some issues, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um answer can you use air conditioning wastewater is that safe in the garden yes yeah, fine um i've got a uh dehydrator not a dehydrator sorry what's the one i'm looking for really take that's the one dehumidifier here upstairs and funny enough i use that water to water the house plants um 
because all it's doing is taking the moisture out of the air, condensing it on a, a radiator, and that drips down into a tray. It's pure water at that point, so um, there's no issues at all with using it. See, that's, uh, the, the only thing that I'd add is if there's any leaks in the air conditioning sh- system, then there's potential. But normally it's just every all the coolants are all co- sealed. They're not, yeah. they're not coming into contact with any of the wa- water. If there's a leak, you'll know about it you'll have no plants tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and here's a nice one. Um, what's your ultimate fertiliser mix for potatoes in tubs? I use 50-50 homegrown compost and multi-purpose compost and add micro rhizome and blood fish and bone. So what's uh, your... Don't crop, you know, that's a, a pretty good mix. And um, the reason for that is because you're adding all the microbial life into your co- into the shop bought compost because usually shop co- uh, bought composts are pretty dead in life anyway. They're just a growing medium. Uh, because they got too hot when they've been produced. And I spoke about that in an earlier video I did. Um, the blood, fish and bones are good all around feed anyway. And uh, you're adding mycorrhiza into it, um, which will help. So it's not a bad mi- mix, that. Um, it really depends what you're after out of your potatoes. Um, now, I've trialed all sorts. And I've, uh, I'll let you guys here on the uh, uh, My Family Garden channel uh no i'm in the middle of another experiment i did start it last year but because i was i ended up getting ill i didn't finish it so that's going to continue this year and that is about um all different growing mediums for potatoes so um that will be coming out at harvest time and you'll know the results then so keep an eye out for that so um we have rabbits can we use poop uh in the rabbit poop in the garden Yes, Pam, you can use that fine. So things like rabbits, guinea pigs, gerbils, things like that, you can use all of that sort of um, manures and you don't need to compost them down. They're so gentle anyway. You can just use it straight on the garden. It's not a problem. If you want to compost it, or even better, just throw it in the compost. Um, But they're fine to use. Uh, Let's see. Let's try and find some more questions. Uh, I'm probably way behind in the questions as well. Uh, and if you guys want to make it a little bit easier, if you've got your questions in capitals, just like Pam did, then that would make things a little bit easier for me to spot. If you spot any t- uh, questions... I just spotted one off, Dean. Tell me your secrets. Well, Dean, my secrets are all in my videos, mate, so knock yourself out. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one. Um, do you ever get frustrated when you've, you've put out a video, you've given the answer in the video, and then you're getting questioned about the you know yeah um yeah it's like they haven't even watched yeah, the video right the tongue in, instead of saying watch the video it's yeah. just better to give them the answer um you know choose your battles i suppose you know um it is frustrating um because especially if you've gone to the extent of really trying to jam pack the video full of tips and hints and giving the information and then you know they, they send you a question wanting an answer to it, but I haven't even taken the time to watch the video. That's a little bit frustrating. Whereas if they watch the video, maybe they could come back to you with a comment that, uh, you know, maybe gives something back to the community rather than just taking. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Uh, see, that, that that's one of the, it's a little frustration of mine because, you can see, you can tell that they haven't watched more than thirty seconds of a video because it was just coming up the answer to the question, uh, and and they've just typed it in and, and the, off they've gone. And even when you've answered the question, there is no you know not even a thumbs up to say thanks. Yeah, you answered my question. Um, it does get a bit frustrating. Um, but here's another one for you. Oh, why did you change your name to Simplify Gardening? I did see this when we first started the questions because he asked this one earlier, but you didn't start with him. So um, oh. I'm glad he's come back up. Um, right. So originally when I started, um, I started and I called it Tony's Allotment. And um, that was a little oh. short-sighted of me because um, when I was making the videos, I wasn't expecting to pick up subscribers at the time. Um, it was just mainly being used for me to store videos on. Um, but then as things started to grow, um, we changed the name to UK Here We Grow. 
And again, that was a bit short-sighted of me because as the channel grew, um, we picked up subscribers all over the place. And it became quite frustrating for me when um, I was having subscribers from all over the globe and the channel didn't really uh, gel with them in, in, in its name. Um, I mean, my biggest audience is the USA at the moment. And, um, you know, and then the channel's called UK We Grow. Now, I didn't change it just for that reason. The main reason I changed the channel was because um, I had plans for the channel as we progress. And part of those plans was the website um, and the books, the courses, and where we're going to be going in the next five and ten years. And because of that, I wanted something that was more descriptive about what I was doing. So uh, Simplify Gardening uh, was a name that I came up with then because ideally that's what I'm trying to do. Although some of my videos may sound complicated, if you follow the process, it's making it easier for those people. And that's essentially what the whole channel is about now. Um, so it just fitted better. It rolled off the tongue better. It was better for marketing and also for um, other reasons. Like the Simplify Garden is now a limited company. So um, if things go absolutely crazy with, um, for argument's sake now, some of you creators will have just seen YouTubers just put up an update now about taxes in America. So if, if things like that go crazy in the UK, if I have to, I'll move the business outside of the UK. And I can do that because I haven't got UK in the name. So there's lots of reasons behind that. And uh, it's just forward thinking for the next sort of 10, 15 years. Yeah, just on that taxes thing, um, if anyone does need advice, uh, I am an accountant, so feel free to drop me a message. Um, generally, for those of you in the UK, um, if, you, if you're if you declaring your income from YouTube and you're self in, declaring it as self-assessment, and just put in your UTR number. If you haven't got a UTR number, then put in your national insurance number and the form's pretty straightforward to fill in. And the good thing is then you're pretty much exempt from paying the taxes in America because yeah. of the treaty we have, so that's good. Yeah. Um, so here's another question. Uh, is it okay to put some sawdust in the compost heap? Are foster hedgehogs, their bedding is straw and sawdust? Yeah, that's fine. Um, so when you're putting stuff like that in the compost heap, just remember sawdust is wood so or like wood chips so it's a 30 parts um uh, carbon to one part nitrogen so you need to make up the nitrogen levels for that so for like for every pound in weight of uh sawdust you're putting in you may need to put 15 or 20 pound in weight of greens to offset that carbon that you're putting in so just bear that in mind um you don't what you don't want to do is make it to the point where it's just all carbon in the heap but um as long as you've got a good balance going through the, the heap it's fine to add it what's the best way to grow a new channel so um what i would suggest someone's just starting off on a new channel is go and um make a load of content quickly get that out there because um, what I'm seeing with people making new channels is they're making a video a week. You're much better off going and filming for 10 weeks, not putting a video out, and then putting them all out every couple of days. And the reason for that is you need what's known as velocity for a channel to grow. And if you're, in a, if you're for argument's sake now, I, I come to your channel, you're brand new, and you've got one video out, and it's a really good video, but you've got no other content, the likelihood of me subscribing is pretty much zero because I can't judge whether or not you're going to put up any other videos or whether or not the rest of the content is going to be the same. And I've got nothing else to go and watch. So um, if you put out like 10 videos in, in a go and then sort of drop it to one a week or two a week after that, that that'll be much better because it puts a little bit of content on there, something that you, YouTube can promote um and and then uh instead of them sending from your video to somebody else's video they'll send it from your video to another one of your videos so that's the best way to go for brand new channels see um when i set when i started out on youtube um I, I, i've got to admit that 
I did all right. What, do you know what? I uh, get into a th- I, I think I got to a thousand subscribers within a, a couple of months. Um, I mean, the, what really I was good. what I was doing was I was watching for any video that was related to my my channel. I was on their video. I was commenting on their videos. So I was pretty much commenting on all of your videos. I was commenting on all of the big big YouTubers videos. The small youtube videos i didn't care who they were but i was watching their videos and leaving them meaningful comments and getting involved and getting that's, involved that's the 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 uh top thing there is meaningful comments because what that does it builds relationships and that's why i'm on your channel now and that's why i helped you earlier on you know because you were leaving comments and that's noticed especially by the so, creator see the, there's that and that's one thing that I was doing. I was do- putting out three, three, four videos a week. I was putting out uh, at least two live streams a week. So I'd do a la- my scheduled live stream on a Saturday night, night, and then I'd do a random live stream while I was at work. Do you know, if I had a few moments at work, just to have a g- general chit chat. And yeah. I was helping other, other. Well, I was doing growth streams to be honest with you. So people would come into my live streams and I'd promote them. Yeah. And, but that brings you in a certain kind of audience as well because i know as soon as i stopped doing growth streams everyone who were coming in just because i was promoting them has stopped coming in yeah so there's loads of people uh who, who were coming in to watch my you know coming into my live streams to get that growing support and as soon as i stopped doing it that's it right as soon as i wanted to talk about gardening and be a bit more focused that's it they just and this is why i suggest to uh people as well now uh i'm not adverse to giving away things you guys know that i've given away uh, you know um pure greenhouses and all sorts of stuff over the years uh every christmas apart from last one you know i've given away the advent calendar stuff and everything else but um what that does if you're promoting it as a giveaway on the actual um channel is it brings in the wrong people like you were saying with the with the uh, promotion th- side of things it brings in the wrong people and then that goes against you and you too so say for argument's sake now as a new channel you put out uh, a video a giveaway video because you've got like a thousand subscribers you give away something in that and then you pick up 500 new subscribers off and you're thinking great and well on my way so what happens with your next video then is that youtube they send out your uh uh your notifications in three different batches so they split your 1500 subscribers up into three segments so 500 at a time and imagine if they sent it to 500 people who came in from uh the from the giveaway and they didn't watch that video youtube is going to assume that video is a rubbish video when it may well be a really good video but because no one in, it, it got involved in the video and uh interacted with the video and things like that youtube will never promote it again so you can hurt yourself by doing that so uh, i've said to people if you're going to give away something or or you're going to do something to try and help others just be mindful of what it is and the impact it's going to have on your channel too so how are you doing for time because uh, i know I- I'm, fine, I'm, here. I, I'm i'm not doing anything tonight the kids are fine they're on the computers <coughs> and the missus so- is in work so Hi. I mean, I'm really... <laughs> Have you got a question for Tony? Go on, man. I read my books when I read my book. He's, he's read his book. Oh, you read your book? <laughs> what book is it? Go and get your book. Go and bring it. Do you want to bring your book and show them? I'm gonna read Monty, it. Can you move the um? Can you move the question so I can see him? Yeah, um, let me get rid of that. Go ahead. Thank you. Here we go. Tap your year old head. Pat your year old head. Pat your year Pat your head like this. Pat. Look who's patting his head. (laughs) Do you like a baby? You do it like the baby. (laughs) (laughs) It's story time with Zaki now. Story time with Zaki. Hey. (laughs) <laughs> he normally me. takes over anyway, Monty. Clap, 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 clap. Show me your hands and clap, clap. Clap, clap. Oh, where are we? Over here. <laughs> <laughs> Monty, 
Go on. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. I ain't doing that. <laughs> touch, touch your toes. Touch I've been at the allotment all day. I can't even move them. I bend down. Copy <laughs> me. Touch your nose. Next, copy me and touch your nose. <laughs> He's touching his nose. <laughs> <laughs> Bend. Now bend. Bend your chubby legs and off you go. Bend your chubby legs and off you go. I know I put a bit of weight down, but Christ. <laughs> there we go. So, go on, show, show everyone your book. So it's all about me. Where is it gone? There. Oh, great book. <laughs> Now it's time for you to go. Hey. He's not going. He's not going. Oh, I thought you were giving him away then. <laughs> we're, we're, doing, we're doing a free prize giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to see what oh. YouTube's reaction on that would be. <laughs> <laughs> you, you banned off YouTube as well as Facebook. <laughs> well, they, they took a live stream down a while ago. It, it, it was, it was you know, I had my arm up like this. So he's climbing onto my arm and launching himself onto the bed. <laughs> oh, yeah, I watched that. I remember it. I, have you um, looked at the stats of your live streams? Um, I looked at mine, and every time I do a live stream, I lose loads of people. And I don't know why that is. Um, and I'm talking like 102 subscribers I lost on the last live stream. And it just really makes you think, is it worth doing them? And then you get people then asking you to do them. You know, it's frustrating. See, um, I lose subscribers every time I go live. Um, yeah. Every time I look, go live, um, that live stream will come up with a video message saying, I've lost five or six subscribers. You're you're a lot bigger than me, so 100 percentage-wise is probably about the same sort of percent. It's um, crazy. It's so, absolutely crazy. So, um, yeah, I lose five or six subscribers at least every live stream. But why I do them, um, I mean, a lot of people say to me that they, you know, I don't come across the same way I come across on my live streams as I do in my videos. And what I want to do with my live streams is I want to be able to connect with people and I want to be able to, I don't want it to be formal. I mean, in my, in my videos, I, I try and keep it on topic and I try and talk about what I'm talking about. So yeah. there's no laughing or, or there's very little laughing or and let very little joking and it's sort of my serial killer face. But <laughs> but uh, on my on my live streams it's like it's a free for all, guys. Whatever you want to do, we'll we'll, we'll do well, it. Just have a and chat. And that's what I looked at, and um, it was funny because people when like when I'm on your live stream and and other people's live streams, you know, when I come into the chat and stuff, they it's funny because I don't think they quite know my sense of humour. And, yeah. and, you know, I'm, I'm always laughing a joke about, but when I'm making videos, because uh, I'm trying to get so much information across and remember what I'm saying and, and everything else, um, you can't put that personality across in them. It doesn't work. Um, you know, so that was why I wanted to do the live streams. But even the live streams, I can't do that in because I'm so busy trying to answer questions and everything else. It's hard to sort of have a laugh and a joke with people. And be able to keep up with the chat, Monty. <laughs> <laughs> See, I think everyone who comes into into the live knows that I'm gonna miss some comments, and I know I'm uh, and knows that I'm gonna be all over the place. I'm gonna be disorganised, and and I and I think Dean loves it about me. <laughs> He's the one who complains uh, first of all. Uh, Tariq, is it? I'm sorry if I said that wrong. Um, I, I'm I'm no dig all the way. Um, don't get me wrong, I'm not adverse to digging, but um, the most of my garden is no dig. I would say probably around about 90% of it. If I need to dig, I will, but I prefer not to because once you start digging, you're destroying all that um, 
structure that's built within the soil that all the microbes, the worms, and all the other soil life build for you. So you're much better off just putting the compost on top. And believe it or not, it's much easier to garden. You know, I'm running, and we're talking about planning earlier on. You know, if I had to dig three full size allotments, so my allotments are 22 foot wide by 198 foot long, and I got three of them. If I had to dig all of that, I'd never manage. And I'd be bringing up the weed seeds constantly to the surface. So in the summer, I'd be weeding constantly, never been able, I wouldn't be able to film a video. Um, and you'll see in my videos this year, you know, I won't be, I, I'm, I will still have weeds, but I won't be, you know, to the point where I'm killing myself trying to weed, you know, I'll be able to just carry on doing what I do as normal. Um, no dig is much better for the soil. Nature doesn't dig and uh, it lets the soil life do it for it. Um, and if you look at what nature does, it drops leaves and another decaying matter on the surface that breaks down. And over the years, the layers build, and and that's that's how I like to work. Um, I'm not as religious as some people, shall we say? <laughs> See, um, this is what we were having a little chat about the other day as well, weren't we? Um, but when you especially when you've got perennial weeds or when you're starting off a no dig garden it's not a bad idea yeah it's not it's not a bad idea to give it a dig um or especially if you've got a lot of compaction because what sometimes happens is you know your first six inches first foot is is actually fine yeah but it's the layer below that that's compact and sometimes you need to give it that deep going going deep give it that double dig break up that bottom compaction layer and then Go no dig. And once, that yeah, once you've got that dug up, you know, um, and there's no compaction there, the no dig is a great way to go, and you will never get a compaction again. So, I mean, I'm walking all over my beds all the time, and they don't compact down, and I can just stick my finger into the bed. It's, you know, it, it is brilliant for that, you know. But See, I that's one of use the, a lot of compost to be able to do it. I mean, that's one of the demonstrations that I was showing was, uh, on my last video was um, that, that I can dig my beds with my hands, you know, bet I could dig my beds with my bare hands. I mean, I don't use bare hands. I always wear, wear gloves because I'll scratch my nails up. <laughs> well, you've got to be a man and have proper nails like mine. Look at them. <laughs> Look at them. They're, they're beautiful. I'm always getting pulled on my nails in the video. They're, 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 be they're, they're beauties. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Uh, you want to come down to my plot? I'll show you how to work properly. <laughs> <laughs> Question: uh, Do you both eat your chickens, or, uh, or uh, I keep chickens, but just for the eggs? Um, do you, do you eat I, your chickens? When I had mine, because I haven't got them at the moment, but when I had them, we didn't eat them. Um, it was mainly egg production, and same thing with ducks. Now it's not to say I wouldn't eat them, um, but my missus and the kids, as soon as I get any animal, they're like, "Oh, it's my new pet." And then all of a sudden, then you can't kill like you know your pet, you know, um, which is when I get my small holding. I've already told them they're not allowed past the garden gate because <laughs> everything else, is, you know, is not for you know it, it, it's there for a reason and it's not a pet. <laughs> see, you see, um, we've eaten chickens. Um, I mean. There's a, there's a story I always tell. Uh, we had this young rooster. He was a really horrible little brat. Um, he, 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 for some reason, he didn't like my son. Do you know, whenever my son went out, he'd just attack my son. Yeah. And uh, one day, my son went out, and this rooster came out and grabbed his glove. Do you know, he pecked at him and took his glove off. And my son went crying off inside. So I went, right, come here, you. <laughs> Grab the rooster. Grab the rooster. <laughs> and I, and I uh, called to you over and said, right, don't worry about this rooster. Done. Yeah. Well, and uh, You know, I'm not adverse to that. And like I said, um, when I've had to get rid of roosters, my father has had them because my missus won't eat them because she's been there bringing them up and everything else. Um, I think once you get past that, but once I get, you know, if I ever get into the small holding, um, then I think that um, that would be different because she will have to realize they're there for a reason. And, you know, we produce all our veg and most of our fruit now. So it'd be great to be able to produce a lot of our meats as well, because then I know exactly how they've been raised and 
how they've been slaughtered, how they've been prepared, and I know exactly what they've eaten, you know? See, you know what you were just saying there? Um, I called up a, a hatchery the other day. and what I, I called up a hatchery the other day and uh, just, just keep it cool. Um, and I was about to order some chickens, so I ordered uh, 40, uh, well, I was going to order 40 layers, sorry, 40 meat birds and 10 <laughs> layers. But by the time I'd have got those meat birds up to the plate, it would have been like nine, ten pound a chicken. Yeah. And and I just don't understand how a shop can market a chicken, you know, sell a chicken for four or five pounds or even less than that well, sometimes. Three pound fifty in Asda's at the moment. It's like so, you know. So we we get three baby chickens from our butchers for seven seven fifty or something like that. Yeah. And, yeah. and crazy, isn't it? It's like I couldn't get a single for that. Uh, but you know, when, you, when you consider that they just feed and feed and feed really, really yeah. cheap foods that is just going to put on weight for the bird, that's all they're worried about is the weight, you know? Um, yeah. But, you know, it is what it is, isn't it? Um, to answer Jane's um, comment that's up on the screen, Jane, you really need the volume. Um, hot beds, if you don't have the volume, they cool down. Um, uh, then you don't get the the benefit of it being a hotbed. So um, you need at least a sort of cubic meter. So think about uh, pallet sized. So three pallets or four pallets and fill that. Um, that would be an ideal size for a hotbed. See, um, I've done quite a few videos on hotbeds and using them to heat my greenhouse. Yeah. Um, because my because my greenhouse, the side that it's on, is not big enough to fit a full hot uh, pallet. What it is, it's just it's two pallets on either side, but on the depth wise, it's just over uh, half a pallet. So yeah. it's just yeah, it's just over half a pallet deep rather than full pallet deep. It still gives us that heat, and and because if you go anaero because uh, hot beds are tradition normally anaerobic heat, yeah. the heat lasts a lot longer. Right now? Yeah, oh. and um, again, it's because of the amount of nitrogen that's in you know in that fresh manure, um, but. Again, you know, ideally for a lot of people, you need the volume. Um, you, you've you got a bit more experience around the Monty, so you know you can manipulate it a little bit. Um, once you, it's like anything else If with, with composting. You know, you can manipulate things to, to suit you, but you need to know the fundamentals in the beginning in order to be able to do that, to understand what's going to happen when you change things. Do you want to... Is the famous Tony that you always, always call to Tony Stark? Do you want to come say hello to him? Is he? Oh, he's Spider Man hanging down there. Because Tony died in the MCU. <laughs> or, is he, or is he the comic book? So this, Tony? this is Tony O'Neill, the, the, the one that we always call Tony Stark, and you always have a good job. Or is he the comic books, Tony? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. Uh, Hugh's, Hugh's got a question for you. What's, what's the worst ever you get comments <laughs> on YouTube? <laughs> we mean you fools for so many pranks. I, I, I well, Mr. Hugh, <laughs> um, there's this guy called Dean, and uh, <laughs> no, um, on YouTube, I don't think I've ever been pranked properly. It takes, uh, it takes some. The problem you've got with YouTube is, you know, they control everything so much. It's like with putting kids in the videos and stuff like that. They don't like it. Um, and, like, anything now that they think is dangerous or they think is silly or they think people will copy and stuff like that, they just take down. So it's really hard to prank someone properly now. You used to have all these prank channels, you know. They're all gone now. You don't see them anymore, you know. <laughs> Uh, I've said Dean's gonna Dean's gonna probably complain if I say it again. But I pranked my dad on April Fool's Day, and well, me and my sister we put uh, we taped a coin uh, on to the top, and when he turned it on, uh, it went everywhere, did it? Uh, spraying <laughs> on him, but he was crouching down, so it didn't exactly get on him. <laughs> the, 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 little, the little monkeys. 
uh, they they got me with that. Um, but I, I'm very gullible. Uh, <laughs> as 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 uh, you're uh, gullible noob from Among Us. As Dean <laughs> as Dean's demonstrated and uh, Steve's demonstrated that they can get me quite quite well. Uh, well I gotta say we have some quite sadistic women in the, in the chat. They're all like trying to get me uh, all threatening me with. There's always a first time here. Jane and Carol. <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to you? <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna get you. God, that's <laughs> it now for the next six weeks, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, do either of you pressure pressure can or uh, f food for storage? Yes, um, I'll save foods in all sorts of ways. I got dehydrator. Um, I'll pressure can because we make our own jams and stuff as well. Um, and uh, we'll. Uh, freeze right things we'll put stuff in the freezer you know and then a lot of other stuff then is stored um just okay. in your sort of cold room downstairs uh it's just hang up or in buckets or whatever the case being you know um a lot of people think that you've got to process everything and you don't um like a cabbage will last most of the winter if you just hang it up by its stalk it will last it the outer leaves may start going but you could take them off and you've still got a really good crown that you can eat, you know. It's um, and people don't they get away from a lot of the older ways, and this goes a little bit sort of contradicting what I said earlier on. But like the old ways of storing food work really well as well. But um, I use all of the methods I can to store things for different things, you know. See, um, I mean, more because we we've got quite a big family, uh, so our food. No, Whatever what? we grow doesn't last that like doesn't last that long. Lying. I mean, there's it's things smoke. like squash that last. I mean, we just ate our last squash today, actually. Yeah. So, um, but there's there's some things that last like that that you can just store. Uh, I mean, where we were pretty self sufficient in garlic. Um, so there's, there's some things like that that you can store. But I don't do a lot of canning. Uh, I do a bit of pickling, um, yeah. I, and mainly it's it's not even pickling for the sake of pickling. It's pickling because I like achar. Do you, uh, do you know what a char is? No. So it's it's like a it's like a it's like a, a pickle with a lot of spices. Do you know, it, it's it's really condensed, spicy. Uh, sort of it gives a kick to your food. Um, but I like making that just because I like. Do you know, I like I like the taste of that. Yeah. So I did I did one with uh, chilies quite uh, recently, and uh, yeah, I, I like that. <laughs> And that's just, it. I mean, and, and this is why I keep saying to people, grow what you're going to eat. You see hmm. new gardeners, they think they've got to grow everything. And um, uh, it's a little bit different, I suppose, if you're a YouTube creator and you're trying to show people how to grow these things. It's different then. But um, if you're never going to eat it, what's the point in growing it? Um, if there's no benefit to you, it's just taking Robot. a price. place. So um, grow what you're going to eat and have an idea how you're going to preserve that food. I mean, a lot of it, you know, can be, can be put into clamps in buckets or in you know, you don't need to do it and way to store things like carrots and stuff is to dig a hole like an old fashioned clamp in the greenhouse or polytunnel and make a clamp in the greenhouse or polytunnel. So it's protected from most of the frosts and stuff like that and the bad weather. But um, it keeps really, really well in some straw in an old-fashioned clamp in the ground, but it, but it's protected by the greenhouse or polytunnel. That works fantastically. Um, so I do that with a lot of the roots and stuff, you know. The potatoes, I don't. I bucket those, and they all go out and get laid out, and um, the cabbage gets hung up. Uh, you know, the squash just ends up in wherever it ends up because that's pretty good, you know, as long as it's not frost damaged, that's fine. So there's loads of ways of preserving foods. Um, <clears throat> have I thought about getting a dehydrator? What's uh, a dehydrator? The only thing, so um, one of the things is we uh, most of our stuff doesn't last very long. I mean, I like that I make that char because simply because I like a char rather than <laughs> rather than uh, having to preserve it. But um, it just doesn't. The food just doesn't last that long. It's, it's eaten. More, we're picking and eating all the time, uh, yeah. and. Stuff that we're preserving, growing that we we're growing stuff that we can preserve rather than uh, as things that will spoil. You need a small holding, Monty. I want a small holding. Um, <laughs> <Where> do I? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, I keep looking around here and they just there's just nothing ever comes up around here. I'd have to go much further west. Um, and then you're looking at around about 450,000 for, you know, five, five or eight guys, something like that. Um, and it, for me to go up there would mean I'd have to give up the job, which, which is the plan eventually anyway, but, um, but I'm just not quite ready for it at the moment, you know? See what you're what you're talking about there is something that I'd really want to do. Um, I really want to get on a small holding, and you know, I, I want uh, I want to be on my own little bit of land. Um, but something around Yorkshire, uh, yeah, uh, something around Yorkshire. You get you're talking about six hundred k, and the houses are tiny, um, and that's probably for about five or six acres and a small three bedroom house. And how I'm going to fit everyone else, everyone in there. I, you, you'll have to sleep with the chickens and you'll have to sleep with the sheep. But <laughs> there's going to be three, there's three bedrooms I'm sleeping. Make, make a letterbox room where you got pull out drawers. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, guys, Tony. Um, I'm getting told. I'm getting given the red card over here. Get off! <laughs> is that what you're getting given? Is it? Yeah. So. Uh, my wife's putting the baby to bed, and I've got to put these yeah. to bed. I thought we'll tackle when. when uh, well, thank you very much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Uh, it's, I've really, I've really been. I'm really grateful for having you here. Uh, oh, for coming on. Thank you very much for all the help that you've been given and all the support that you give to so many people. We appreciate yeah. it. We appreciate you. Well, people, you know that. And thank you very much to Tina for being uh, Tony's rock. We appreciate. <laughs> Okay, right. On that note, I let's call it an evening. To my evening. So, I thought it was a day. That... <laughs> day. Thank you very much for joining us. Right. Take care. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah.